Hey folks, Douglas Smythe here. And today, well, I just, I wanted to do an experiment. So for a period of 10 days, we'll do a week. It's Sunday the 16th, I believe. And here we have um, some fan soap from Greece. I decided to use this one. And what I want to, it's a blooming thing. I want to prove that blooming will not screw up the pH on your soap. So I've already done a pH test of this soap after I bloomed it and used the shave with. So I'll do another test right now. Just so you can see it. See it live. So this has been bloomed, so it's it's wet. There's a little bit of bloom water there. So we really get the soap on there. Okay. So we're looking at about eight, a pH of eight, which is great, and right where it wants to be. Now we're gonna fill it up. Doesn't need to be hot water to prove this, but I'll use hot water to soften it anyways. Okay, so that's over the surface of it. And I'm just gonna put this on my windowsill. <laughs> See the blade? Uh, to sit overnight, and I'll use again tomorrow. I'll dump that out, the bloom water. I'll bloom it again, and then shave with it, and then I'll test the pH again. That'll be day two. So, it begins. Okay, day two. As you can see, there's still water and all that other stuff in there from me leaving it soaking wet the night before. Yeah, breaking in all that foam and what that's built up there. So yeah, that was, water was left to sit in that overnight. Let me just put some hot water on this today. So yeah, that's softer. It's much softer. There we go. Okay. So now... Let's just dump that out. I didn't end up shaving with this today because I left it in my kitchen and not in my bathroom. But I think this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to keep watering overnight. Now that actually seems to absorb the water considerably. It looks like it's grown. So let me just grab a pH strip here. Let me just make sure I'm testing the soap and not the water. And there it is. Eight. So, day two, leaving water in overnight. Okay, here we are, back again, day three. This has been soaking. Look at that, it's all smushy and stuff. And actually, let's take a tab since it's wet. There we go. Day number three. I will add more water to this soap. Let it once again sit up there. Now. Yeah. 
we are looking at eight still. So let me label this and I'll see you tomorrow for day four. Okay, folks, we are back for day four. Look at that. Now the water is no longer <laughs> absorbing into the soap and the soap's grown considerably. Kind of like those little animals you put in a glass of water and it grows. That's what's happening here. So, losing a little chunkage there. Now, again, I'd like to point out this is an extreme <laughs> form of blooming here. Uh, you typically wouldn't leave water in your soap. You typically, I would only hope, you're allowing your soap to dry for hours before you put the lid back on. But I'm just testing this out again to show that the pH does not change due to simple blooming or extreme blooming. <laughs> okay. And putting some hot water on the puck. Hmm. Smells great. Okay. So it's drying off my hands so I can handle the pH strip. see day four we are still at eight so I will mark this strip and check back in tomorrow for day five Cha. and welcome back folks for day number five of my little blooming pH experiment so this has been sitting in here all night as you can see let's pour that out I'm going to start checking the pH off the top of this and then refilling it, which I think I should, what I should have been doing. There we go. We even got a little soap gunk stuck to it. And... Yeah. Eight still. Okay. So let me label that. And... We'll fill that up some more. Day five. The water's hot. And another day. Okay, see you tomorrow on day six of the pH challenge. Welcome back, folks, for day six of the Bloom pH challenge or whatever we're calling this. Uh, okay, so see that left over from last yesterday. Still, I have noticed one thing, folks. Uh, I've been leaving these in my windowsill above the sink, and you know, pH is everywhere, but the sun doesn't help either. And I think I well, you can see the sun <laughs> has not been nice to these, so I don't know how well I'm able to document that after the fact, but we got video. Okay, another day. And welcome back, folks, to day number seven of the Extreme Blooming Challenge. <laughs> Here we go. This is what's left over from last night's bloom. Okay.
And we're still at eight for day number seven, folks. Let's put up there on the window sill. Got some more hot water back to this bad boy. I do want to say that uh, all my tabs are fading. I think I already brought this up before. But uh, due to the Arizona sun in the window, but you can see they're all fading at relatively the same rate. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow on day eight. <laughs> Greetings, folks, and welcome back to day number. Now, I think I screwed up somewhere on the line. I actually think yesterday was day seven, though I said day six. Um, so today would be day eight. But I mean, as you can see and get the gist of, not much is changing here. Why is my focus way out here? So let's just put this here. Here we go, another day. Dump that out. It's really absorbing the water too, as you can see. And I only had three hands. Okay, here we go. Again, I got soap on that. Let me just try to that side's better. And again, we are looking about eight for that still. So day eight, and still at eight, a pH of eight. So let me label this properly today. And I'll get back to you tomorrow in number nine of our test. But before that, let's put a little more water in here. Excellent. See you tomorrow. Greetings, folks. I'm back, and it's day, let's see, it's day nine, we're assuming. So here we go. That's what's left of yesterday's bloom water. Ooh. And we're still at eight. So day nine, I could do another day or I can just start letting this bad boy dry out now and uh, start curing again. But I think I'll do another day of this test, so. There we go. See you tomorrow for our last pH test. Mm. Okay, folks. Welcome back to day 10. And as you can see, we got this like slurry. <laughs> that's... Okay. Now after this test, I'm gonna let this dry for, well, however long it takes to harden up again and then use it. We're still at eight. Shocker. <laughs> okay, so I might just put this out in the Arizona sun. So on to the next section of our test, allowing the soap to re-cure. If you hear panting in the background, that's Huxley. <laughs> Not me. Okay. Greetings, folks, and I <laughs> thought the camera was running, but it's not. This is day, like, 10 or 11 of drying. The soap is completely dry. I just wet it now, but you'll see there's no mold or anything on here. That's usually the results of allowing your soap to dry completely. Uh, if you get mold or any of that stuff, um, that's because you didn't allow your soap to dry. Now, this has been drying for 10, a little over 10 days, about 11 days now. Um, but you remember the extreme blooming I did. So... Just 
Doing a little now. And it's hard again. The soap is definitely hard. <laughs> you hear that? And that's just been sitting on the windowsill, drying. And you can do that with any soap. I leave all the lids off all my soaps all the time because I have room to do that. But uh, mix, you know, it reactivates like the curing process of the soap, if that's possible, if that makes sense. Um, making the soap drier, it loses water faster and harder, making it longer lasting. You can't do this really with a croak or you don't want to or the cream soap because that's, what, that's what, they're, what they're not about. <laughs> that's not what they're about rather. But uh, Okay, here we go. Now this is Fana. It's an artist's soap from Greece. Uh, it's really great, great slickness. Um, the scent is still there. And this was extreme gloomed. So, there you go, folks. It is still, it's great soap. It's still good. Blooming did not wreck it, destroy it, change its pH, or whatever else people are claiming that it does. Uh, my proof is just, I ran it through the mail. You can do the same test. Just grab some pH papers and allow yourself to dry when it's done. Voila. <laughs> That's more the water that I just tested than the soap. But if you can see, it's still at eight. And this has been for the entire time. The pH never changed. So, lesson learned, let your soap dry, folks. Let it dry, seriously, all day long before you put that lid back on there. If mold or anything else scares you, allow it to dry. That's all you need to do if you wet bloom. This is wet blooming. There's many different ways of blooming. Don't combine all them together. When people say blooming's bad, you're talking typically about wet blooming. And it's a lot of misconception there. So, uh, yes. Keep your soap dry when you're done with it. And, uh, I'm just that down. And, uh, you'll be fine. So no more paranoia. No more, uh, <laughs> when it comes to blooming. You'll be okay. Again, let your soap dry. Take care, folks.